morning, parents. Uh, it is exciting to have a new school year kick off again. Uh, the world around us is crazy, going fast, and we are ex excited to have you and your students a part of our institution this year. As I begin this process and this lecture today about cheating in the school, in the system, and the educational system, I'd like to help you be able to help us as parents. Our, our motto here at Valley Forge Baptist is that we partner together to raise a next generation of Christians to make a difference in the workplace. And so what our job here is as educators is to help you as parents with the knowledge that we have and you as parents to help us with the knowledge you have of your students. Now, what we're gonna discuss is some cheating. The cheating that has been going on and has been getting worse and worse as the educational system has become more digitalized. In researching uh, for this, one of the a quote that I came across was by my Martin Van Buren. It says this: "It is better to do it right the first time than to have to explain why you did it." And that is a very exact method or understanding of what cheating is. So what we're going to talk about first is the definition of cheating. To, the definition of cheating is this, is to behave in a dishonest way in order to get what you want. And what's happening with our students is that they are acting in a dishonest way, they are taking something, they are stealing something from somebody else so that they can get the better grade, so that they can beat the student next to them, so that they don't get in trouble when they get home. You see, they're acting dishonestly so that they can get something that they want but don't necessarily deserve. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the types of cheating, the consequences of cheating, the how, what you can do to identify where your student might cheat, and finally, what are the responsibilities of the parent, the teacher, and the student in helping them, to, helping them in regards to cheating. Now, the first one is the types of cheating. The first type of cheating is plagiarism. Plagiarism is one that is common in when we're doing long writing assignments or when you're doing a homework assignment. And here's the, the three couple things, uh, characteristics that you would need to be looking for. One, they would be copying a paper. So plagiarism is when a student takes a paper from somebody else and copies it word for word, okay? Word for word. Also, a next, the next one, was, would be when they buy a paper offline or we're not rewording a sentence. Now when they buy a paper offline, what they can do is they can put a title in and they can put in how long it needs to be and they need to say how many references and somebody, obviously there's always people out there trying to make money, will type this up and send it to them and they can then turn it in as their paper. Well, that's not them doing the work, that's not them doing it right, that is them getting the easy way to get what they want. And so what we see here is this is something that is prevalent due to the effect of technology in the classroom and in their homes. And so that's your job as parents to help us to be able to identify that and see that happening. So we have plagiarism. Those are mainly on written assignments. The second type of cheating, as you can see in this picture, they're passing homework, turn it in before you leave. Um, they're working on their homework in class, and this is copying homework. This is one that is happening on a regular basis. Students get busy, and they have many different things, whether it's playing sports or extracurricular or working, and they don't have time to do their own work, so what they'll do is they'll borrow it from a classmate. They will literally just ask a classmate for what they did, and they'll copy it. Now, that's not the only way. What a lot of them have done is figured out how to find this, their homework online, the answers online. In math, they can plop it into a, a math uh, program that you can type into Google, and guess what happens? They can put in a problem, it spits out the answer, and all they have to do is sit and copy that. Now, they didn't learn how to do it. That's, technically, that is cheating. That is using their resources, but it's not necessarily them doing their own work to learn how to do it. You see, what happens with this copying is it's them once again, behaving in a way to get something they want as opposed to to do what they need to do. So copying homework is very prevalent and even so much so with the Quizlets and different things like that um, that they use to help them 
be able to answer the questions. The third type of cheating is when they actually cheat on a test. Now, how do they do this? Well, <laughs> honestly, I thought it was pretty cool. You, you, you type in cheating on tests, and you go to Google, and you say images. And I'm telling you, it's amazing the different ways that these students have come up with it. They, they'll put a stocking that looks like a like um, skin, and they'll write on that, and they'll slide it on while the teacher's not watching, and they'll have it all the answers there. I mean, they have come up with so many different ways, and they just what they do is they make little written notes somewhere, whether it's on something on some on the back of the student in front of them, on a little note card, and put it under their seat, and put a note card up under their desk. But they have come up with so many creative ways to avoid studying, and so you as parents can help by asking, did they study for the test? Asking, have they studied? Let me see what you're studying. How are you studying? And then, uh, honestly, the teachers need to do their part as well to, to monitor, to make sure that they're looking to see if those students have something that they're studying or looking over. The next thing is through technology. <laughs> they cheat on tests with technology. How do they do that? They, they send an answer via text back and forth. They can send, um, different answers, whether when they're, especially when they're home on um, online schooling, they just type their friend and the friend texts them the actual answer. This is not doing them any favors. They, yes, they may be getting an A today, but they're really not learning the information for the future. Now, those are our types of cheating that our students do. And this quote came and when I was doing this research and I thought it, it kind of fit very well. Cheating in school is a, self, a form of self-deception. We go to school to learn. We cheat ourselves when we coast on the efforts and the scholarships of someone else. And I think that's exactly what's happening. These students, they deceive themselves by making it feel like they are doing something and this is how I should get my grade and this is how I can get my, the answers that I need as opposed to actually learning the material. They're relying on somebody else. This was James E. Faust who said that. And so what are, what are they doing to deceive themselves? What, what, why do we need to correct it? Well, we need to correct it. We need some consequences so that they will understand what they're doing is wrong. And so what are some consequences to cheating? The first thing that we have a consequence to cheating is simply a detention. You know, you've got to come in and sit in the classroom, do some work that, that, that they didn't want to do, and after school or at after school work detention where they have to serve in some capacity you know if that doesn't work another thing that would work is a suspension you stay home for the day your mom has to supervise you and you have to do your work at home and your mom and dad then hopefully will will ratchet down and say you know what you, you, you continue to do this you are definitely need some extra punishment you see but it doesn't stop with that kind of consequence there's more here it is, it's the zero. <laughs> now zero, one of the consequences is, is academically it's a zero. And that's not good for your grade, it hurts your grade. But not only do you get a zero, but they make, we make you redo the work. You see, it goes back to our quote by Martin Van Buren. Hey, do it right the first time. Just do it right the first time. And you know, God wants us to do it right. And, and if we can do that, it will make a difference. So we have, we'll, we'll make them redo it and that will count, but really it doesn't really help the grade because that zero hurts it so badly. You see, but there's more consequence. And this consequence I think is the most important, especially since we work in a Christian school. And one of our goals is to develop a godly character. But what happens when you cheat, you develop a negative reputation. You, de you, you take your reputation that has, is honest and trustworthy and in, um, has great integrity and honor and stature and you throw it down the drain because you want to get a good grade. So as opposed to thinking about of the, the future and your reputation, you think of that moment in time to hopefully get that good grade one time. You say, well, what should we be looking for as parents? As parents, what should you be looking for to help us in identifying the different uh, cheating that happens. And so what I, I wrote down some different opportunities that our students might might try to cheat on. And as parents, when you see these homework assignments or these, these uh, assignments come home, uh, my suggestion is you do your part to, in advance, before it all starts, to ask them some questions about those assignments. 
Because our, our job, our, our desire, is that they have a good reputation, that they have a reputation that is trustworthy and honest, and, and that they can be trusted and not, not, not trusted. And so here are some opportunities that these students might try to cheat. The first one is on a translation project. You know, when they have to take, when that Spanish teacher assigns uh, their testimony in Spanish, well, they'll write it in English and then they'll just put it into Google Translate and boom, there you go. That's, that's plagiarism. That's not their work. That's not, they're not learning from that. They're learning how to do it the easy way and not really do it the right way. Once again, it goes back to our quote, do it the right way so you don't have to explain why you did it that way. And we know why, because it's the easiest, because they can get a good grade in their mind. And what we do as parents, hey, when you hear there's a translation project, hey, let's do that. Let me see if I can help you do that. The next, the next time that you see a lot of opportunity is large writing assignments. Whether it's doing a Proverbs Index, or whether it's writing a 11-page research paper, or doing a book report, or uh, writing our um, uh, Voice of Democracy papers that we turn in. Any of those things, large writing assignments, you as parents, look into it. Ask them, what are they working on? How are they doing that? Get some insight into what they're doing. First off, it'll be educational for you, but more importantly, it will help them Avoid getting into a opportunity, the opportunity of cheating and taking somebody else's work. You see, that's not it though. The next one, this is mine. I, I, can, I can tell you this is one that I, I think of often. It's non-favorite subject. I'm a math teacher. So when I had to do English homework, man, that was hard. It wasn't easy. And so for me as, an English, as a math major, it was difficult. It was difficult to do the English work. So I would rather just get it from somebody else, and that's not fair, and that's cheating, that's an opportunity. So, so if you know your kid, and you know your child, and you know what they're good at, then, then maybe they're trying to take advantage of not doing the other stuff, and so your job as a parent is to, to look for opportunity, that opportunity and, and see that they're doing the homework themselves. The next opportunity that comes up is obviously memorization test, when there's a lot to memorize, and so, when you know they have a big memorization test, ask them to start studying in advance so they are not tempted to cheat down the road. The next opportunity is when they have extra work, extra homework. And this happens on occasion, not because we want to, but because it does happen. And so as a parent, when you know there's extra homework assigned that day, take the time, do the dishes. Let them do their homework. But instead of letting them go to their room or go to the basement where nobody can monitor them, have them work right there in the, in the kitchen, right next to you while you're working on something so that you can see that they're actually studying and working because the temptation is real. And the temptation to do it the easy way is, is very tempting. And so therefore, if you as a parent are there next to them, you may keep them from getting into something they should. Now, we talked about the types, we talked about the consequences, we talked about when this could happen. Now, let's talk about how we should address it. You see, as it's the responsibility of a teacher to be the front line in the classroom when it comes to cheating. And the first thing we'll see with that is this. They need to do their part to catch the student doing it wrong. I don't like to catch our students doing it wrong, but at the same time, it's a great way to teach them a lesson. And as a teacher, it's our responsibility to catch them when they are doing something wrong and not let them get away with it. And so our job as teachers, first off, is to catch them. The second thing is to confront them, to go to the student and, and, and take away the note card if you see it on the desk. If, there, if there's two kids in the back copying answers, go up and take the homework. Confront the student. Don't just let them do it. Don't let them continue in that path. Our job is to help guide them not let them get into more trouble. The third thing we need to do is communicate this. Once we've confronted, once we catch them, we need to communicate with them what they did and how they did it and what they should not do the next time around. You see, it doesn't end there with just with the student. The teacher must do two more things. They must, first off, they must go and communicate to the parent. It is very important that the teacher uh, our, our teachers will be communicating with you if they see their, that, your, that your daughter or your son is cheating. And because honestly, it's, you can't help us. 
and, and, yet, and, it, and once again, it goes back to our theme, our motto out of the academy, to partner together with you as parents. We're not gonna do all the parenting. You have to do the parenting. We're gonna partner with you to catch them if it happens. And so, therefore, we need to do our part. So not only will the teacher confront and talk to the, the student, but they will communicate to the parent. But you know, the, second, the third thing is they will, they will consult for punishment. They'll consult the administration. They won't lay it just on themselves. They're gonna to talk to other people to find out this is what the punishment is. Keeping the name of the student uh, uh, confidential. But the, the talking to the administrator, because maybe that student's struggling with this in multiple classes and the administrator wouldn't know that. And so as a teacher, communicating to find out what that actual punishment is so that we can help that student if they're continuing in that path. You see, the responsibility of the teacher is great. The responsibility of the parent is great. The responsibility on the student is great. And so now let's address the responsibility of the student. Hey, I like this picture. We see this kid sitting in front of the thing. He's upset. He's sitting there in front of the principal's office. He's upset. And, and why is he upset? Because he knows he did something wrong. Mark Van Buren said, hey, do it right so you don't have to explain it. You see, a student does something wrong. They're sitting there waiting, they can't, they, they're distraught because they have to explain something they did wrong. You see, what should the responsibility of the student be? The first thing they should do is to make it right with the teacher. You see, remember, they, they're stealing and they're, they're cheating is going against what that teacher is asking them to do. So they have to make it right with the teacher. They also need to make it right with their parents. Why do they make it right with the parents? Because their parents are paying for their education. Their parents are the ones that are wanting them to grow and to be smart and be able to handle what's going to happen down the road. And what they're doing is they were deceitfully and, and not being, they're not honoring and they're going against what their parents are wanting them to do is to take somebody else's answer. So they need to make it right with the teacher. They need to make it right with the parents. And they need to make it right with God. You see, ultimately, we, when, as a Christian, as a Christian, our stu the student is actually going against what God would want them to do in that classroom and what the God would want them to be doing with their opportunity and their abilities. You see, the responsibility of the student doesn't end with just making it right. And yes, that will help their heart because they've made it right with the teacher and they've made it right with God and made it right with the parents. But here's the responsibility of the student. The responsibility of the spirit is, honestly, to redo the work. It's for them to get, go back and redo the work that they were supposed to have done the first time. You see, Martin Van Buren was very clear. Do it right the first time so you don't have to explain. You see, Colossians 3.23 says, And do all heartily as unto the Lord. You see, when that student cheats, they are not doing their work right. When that student takes somebody else's answers or copies somebody else's paper or has a little note card, they are not doing what's right according to God. They are doing it wrong. And now they're going to have to have an explanation. Oh, because everybody else in the class is doing it. Oh, yeah, everybody else is doing it. And, and honestly, that was in the study on cheating. One of the things I noticed is that students said that they, they would cheat because they know of 75% of other students that cheat. And so therefore, they thought it was okay. That doesn't make it right. Because somebody else is doing wrong does not mean we can do wrong. The last, the last thing that is resp the responsibility of the student is that they need to do their own work. The responsibility of the student is to make up and do it right. Our job here at Valley Forge Baptist Academy is to train your students and your children to love God to be good at math, to be good at science, to be good at English, to know their history, to love their Bible. But those are all knowledge-based things. Our job is to develop a character in them. That when the temptation comes, they'll be able to stand. Our job as a Christian school is to help students avoid cheating at all cost. Educating them Educating the parents, educating the teachers will help them in developing their own idea of what right and wrong. Our job as an institution is to help them train them
for the future. Will we be doing that if we allow them to cheat? Thank you.